Next lecture, Sergei Igorevich Repin, please. Uh, so today we have not the usual scientific conference, but the conference strictly connected with the, the memory of Olga Alexandrovna and when preparing to the talk, uh, I have looked through this book, which was uh, issued by the Academy of Sciences and which contains a large paper uh, about the results of Olga Alexandrovna written by uh, Nina Nikolaevna Nuraltsova and Grigory Sanch Seregin. And there is an appendix to this paper uh, there is a list of publications. So the first publication of Olga Alexandrovna is dated back to 1949. It is uh, in Russia and it is the PhD thesis. In Russian, it is called Решение задачи каши для гиперболических систем методом конечных разностей. Solving of hyperbolic systems by the finite difference method. And this is exactly to my rememberings because in personal talks, she told me that she considered herself as one of the founders of the final difference method. And the very last paper, which, is, uh, which has the number 345, it is the retranslation of the, uh, her last paper in our Zapiski Naučnik Seminar of PAMI. Uh, and uh, the English title is Construction of Bases in Spaces of Solenoidal Vector Fields. And I know this uh, paper because it was under my eyes how, how she worked with this and by which things she was motivated. It is also closely related to problems in numerical analysis. So in my rememberings for all her life, she was really a, a pure mathematician, but she was also an applied mathematician. And uh, this interest, uh, uh, so when selecting the topic of the talk for today, I tried to, to, to select some things which are closely related to her memory. And uh, let me start with the, with some introduction to, to uh, things. Uh, some partial differential equation or boundary value, initial boundary value problem. We have three, three basic problems. The first one is existence and uniqueness. Yeah, this is the basic correctness of the problem. The second one is the properties of exact solution, regularity, boundaries, many, many other things. And then we have uh, item C, which is a reliable approximation of this U. And this item has two sub-items. Uh, the first one is how to construct this approximation. And the second one, how to verify that the, 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 the function, the solution which we have constructed is not some garbage, but it is really something related to the exact solution. And what I will talk about uh, is exactly about this problem, uh, which if we, if we are not able to solve this problem, then the story will never be ended because uh, the, the, the original construction of uh, partial differential equations is, is quantitative analysis. They are instruments of analysis. And uh, um, so formally, the, the, the problem looks like this. We have approximation V, uh, so which we want to compare with U. Then by this E, I will always denote the error. So ideally, what we would like to have, you, you would like to have the error identity you can, you can call it a posteriori identity. Here we have some measure, and here we have some computable quantity, which depends only on V and on the problem data. To be of practical use, of course, this, this part should be directly computable. Otherwise, we, we, we never know what is, what is here. And the second one, also very important condition, is that the measure which, which is sent here it must be consistent or matched with the, uh, with the space in which uh, our uh, exact solution lies. So it, it, it should be, in, in, in simple models, it should be applicable to any function in the energy space. And uh, at first glance, uh, 
it is not so difficult. So you can write, for example, identity like this, where this R of U is the equation residual. But right from the beginning, it is clear that if, if we look at this pair, V and V star, as usual, for example, H1, H minus one, yeah? then this guy is not computable because this is a supremum type uh, norm. And uh, each time we, we would like to do something like this for other equations, we will be faced with the same problem. On the other hand, if we do in, uh, in another naive way, for example, for the simple equation, if you, if you take uh, uh, this elementary problem, it is clear that we have this identity. So this identity is correct, but unfortunately useless because uh, it is not applicable to approximations in H1. And even if we manage to smooth your, for example, finite element approximations or whatever, and uh, uh, replace this V by some smooth function, it, it, nevertheless, it will be useless because our sequences, they converge in H1. So this, uh, uh, this identity gives you nothing. And if you look at the Cauchy problem, then the situation is practically the same. Uh, I, will, I will try to, to, to show things on the most uh, simple examples, avoiding complicated boundary conditions, extra terms, just to, 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 to show the main ideas. So of course, uh, uh, it's, it's clear that you have this identity. So if you square both parts and make some elementary integration by parts there, with the, with the cross term, you arrive to this error identity. It is uh, even I saw in some publications that it, it was used in, in computation, but it is again uh, suffers the same drawback as, as the first one, because uh, 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 it is inconsistent with respect to standard uh, uh, sequences in, in energy spaces. So getting error identities of, of such a type, as I said, it is, it might be a very complicated thing. There are some classes of problems for which we can derive them. They, they exist. For example, for the reaction uh, diffusion problem, we, uh, we can derive them. But in general, we cannot. And we have to operate with, uh, instead of identities, uh, with two-sided estimates. And what we can get out of, if Assume that we, we have managed to get, uh, um, benefits we can take out. So first of all, of course, the, the, the first item is obvious. If you compute something and you construct somehow these approximations, you can substitute them here, see what, what is the result. The second one also, uh, the second item also is very really interesting. It is uh, if we if we uh, have problem with uncertain or random data. In this case, we have not one solution of our problem, but the so-called solution cloud. And using using these estimates, we, we can uh, estimate the parameters of this solution cloud. And the, the last one as usually said, the last but not the least, uh, it is that these uh, instruments uh, can be very helpful in comparison of mathematical models. Uh, assume that we have U is the solution of the original problem and uh, US is the solution of a simplified model. The example which immediately comes to mind, this is 3D and this is 2D simplified problem. Then if you uh, substitute it here, then you have estimates of the model in general. Yeah. And uh, uh, using the, at the moment, I would like to introduce this book, which was recently published, where exactly this subject uh, was studied. We worked uh, on this matter about 10 years with my colleague from, from Zurich. Uh, so now uh, let's, this is the end of the introduction and I want to go to parabolic problem. 
again, let's uh, take the simplest case. We have Cauchy problem for uh, uh, this parabolic equation. It is well known due to fundamental and basic results um, that uh, the exact solution meets this integral identity where we can select test function in the space V0. And uh, uh, the question which, which arose uh, about 20 years ago, I, I will say, is how to control and how to derive this class for, for, for such type of equation. Uh, I will use standard notation, I think, for everybody here. Uh, these uh, indices are known. Uh, I only uh, selected by blue uh, those which are special. Uh, by, by these brackets, double brackets, uh, we denote uh, the jump between zero and two of some quantity. And by uh, uh, y star d, uh, we introduce this uh, special space where uh, the spatial di divergence is uh, uh, is an L2, and uh, uh, this is the corresponding node. So, and here we, we come to the history, which I would like also to tell you about it. Uh, in um, these years, estimates of such a type, they were uh, derived by the calculus, by the duality theory and the calculus of variation type. Uh, worked with this and was satisfied, there were some results. Uh, but uh, uh, then, in uh, when I came to laboratory, Olga Alexandra started to, to talk with me, and um, she knew and she uh, understood, of course, the this variational methods. But it was not her, uh, let's say, her, her, her best case. She worked you, typically. She worked with another machinery, and she told me that. If you derive these estimates with uh, the help of uh, variational calculus, then uh, there should be a way how you can do this using the basic integral identities. And uh, uh, then there appeared two papers which were communicated. One is for parabolic equations, and this uh, was in our journal algebra, uh, no, this one in our journal, Algebra and Analysis, and where this uh, new way was used. And I have found in my archives this uh, piece of our talks, because we talked and then she thought about at home and came with uh, handwritten things. You see her typical, nota her typical notation. This is entitled questions written, and it is uh, 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 about a posterior estimates, and here it is exactly written what, what I started with, that I do not understand what is the purpose of estimate like this, where you have the right-hand side incomputable, and uh, uh, I think this is dated back approximately to, to, to this year. So I'm, of course, very lucky that I uh, had an opportunity to discuss this with you. So, and then later, this machinery was, of course, extended and uh, presented in the book. Uh, so let me demonstrate first on this uh, uh, problem how it works. So you have this uh, basic identity. Now what you do, you insert here your approximate solution. Of course, it should be from the proper class that you can compare it with this. Then, then the balancing terms appear here. Then the second, uh, you select the test function like this. And then immediately in the left, you have uh, some error measure. And here you have some, uh, some integral with, with whom you need to do something. And uh, a rational way to do this is to introduce one other function, which, which is a vector valued field that is image of a flux using integration by part formula split this thing. And then, of course, this is error identity, the very first one. But this error identity, uh, it is consistent in the sense uh, it is applicable to approximations in proper spaces for y and uh, for v and y. Uh, but of course, this uh, part is not 
computable because it, it has unknown error here. But uh, nevertheless, uh, from, from this error identity, you can extract the estimate because, of course, you can estimate this part using the fact that you have this here and also, uh, of course, this lower term you also can estimate and then you uh, immediately have uh, uh, have estimate like this, where the, 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 instead of identity, you have uh, the measure one. And, um, but, but here, of course, it, it appears this constant, uh, the Friedrich's constant uh, from, from the second term. And for a long time, we, we tested, uh, thanks to my colleagues, uh, some of them, uh, uh, some publications are here. We, we tested for different, for finite, element for EGA approximation, phase type approximations for bio problem estimates of this type, they, they work quite well. Sometimes, of course, there, there is some overestimation here. You need to apply special trick to diminish it, but I will not go to this subject. Uh, instead, uh, an important comment that uh, usually in, uh, in these measure runs, there appear constants in functional inequalities like Friedrich, Poincaré, Sobolev estimates, Trace, Roshin, yeah, and so on. So this uh, somehow, and I think this is, uh, 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 this we cannot bypass. So if you want to solve the problem in such a fashion, the constants in uh, embedding type or uh, trace type inequalities, they will appear and this strongly motivates the activity related to how to, to getting uh, estimates of this constant. And now I come to new results, which are relatively fresh. It appears to be that the identity I, I presented you is not complete. It is not the best. And in reality, if you, um, if you take two errors, uh, if you also introduce error for, for this dual variable for the flux, then you have this identity where, uh, where the, the, this norm is just a combination of these two. Again, it is clear that this identity is consistent with respect to converging sequences. The right-hand side can be estimated from above by this quantity, which is evidently tends to zero. So this is a real basis for uh, getting uh, future estimates. Of course, we, we, we have to do something because here we have some unknown, but it is manageable. Uh, this uh, machinery can be uh, generalized to uh, problems, uh, parabolic problems. This for me was, was, was very interesting because uh, problems with uh, nonlinearities like P. Laplace and, and they were for a long time in studies and uh, uh, more or less things are clear there. But here, this is the parabolic equation with uh, where the relation between uh, gradient and exact flux is uh, defined as follows, where this dg is the, uh, the so-called compound functional, which is uh, created by g, it's conjugate, and uh, uh, it is more or less standard construction in convex analysis. And uh, we know that uh, this, uh, uh, this functional is non-negative and uh, uh, if G is differentiable, then uh, this guy is simply the uh, derivative of uh, uh, computed by this formula. So uh, in reality, in this case, we have this connection between P and gradient of U. And um, in the simplest case, if you have this, then of course, uh, this DG, it is, it's simply the norm. And it is the only one case when this uh, quantity it coincides with this. And what uh, I would like to say that in reality, this is, this is a certain measure of the distance, which is natural for nonlinear problems. Uh, I will not go to details uh, to, 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 to say, uh, to, to define formal correctness of the problem defined uh, as follows. Of course, there should be some conditions on this integral and uh, on spaces. Of course, this product must be summable uh, but let's assume that the, the problem is well posed and then it uh, 
meets uh, the following integral identity. So let's uh, apply this uh, uh, technique to, to this case. And in this case, you have this error identity where the norms are replaced by these uh, complexes. So you see, uh, of course, if uh, G is a quadratic functional, then here you, you, you will have norms. So again, you, uh, you, you, you can prove that uh, it is consistent with respect to sequences, this and that. And uh, one comment, in uh, uh, numerical analysis, one line in the uh, posterior error estimation is strongly related to the so-called hypercircle uh, identity. Uh, it was uh, derived many, many years ago. I think it, this paper is dated back to self. Independently, the, the same was, but by different technique was done. Uh, so come on. It says that for the Poisson problem, you have this identity. Uh, this uh, identity holds only provided to satisfy this condition, usually it is equilibrium condition. In the posterior analysis, there is a big line of research, which is where people try to uh, modify approximations in such a way that to have this uh, satisfied and use this. I'm, I'm not talking about efficient, not efficient. Uh, I think that uh, uh, it's another question, but uh, just uh, from, from it follows the hypercircle identity for the parabolic problems. It looks like this. But what is the difference? The difference uh, is that the extra differential type condition in the case of uh, uh, this elementary Poisson problem, it is imposed only on the flux. But here to have uh, such a nice uh, uh, balance uh, relation, you need to uh, impose this condition, which is uh, both for approximation of the flux and for V, which, which means that it is more difficult to satisfy, to balance this. Now uh, I'm, uh, uh, close to, to end, but there are still two items. Uh, example, yeah, of uh, well-known well problem, the Laplacian, then all these spaces are defined like this. And uh, what will be the meaning of these complexes, which, which are there? So the, the complex, which is on the right, uh, contains only approximations, V and Y star, and of, of course, this is computable, you should only take integral, and that's it. And here you have two measures. So uh, if you replace P star by what it is, you express it via U, you will have this. And if uh, here you express U from P star as it is, you will have this. So these uh, two quantities, they are non-negative, and one is only if V coincides with U, and P star coincides with Y star. There are error measures. Uh, so we, we, how how to get? Of course, of course, maybe maybe this uh, looks unusual, and we would like to have something more transparent for for this measure. Then we can use known identities, uh, uh, which often used in analysis of such type problems. And if you use them, you can estimate uh, the measure from below. For the case of alpha larger than two, by this, uh, so here you see that this this part is estimated. This one is uh, uh, remains as, as it was, and uh, here we have standard norm. Uh, a bit later you will see why it, why it is useful. I just want to mention that if, for example, alpha between one uh, 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 inequality, I can replace this by, by the norm and get a standard norm for, for, for the error and flux, but then here you will this uh, complex. So now things are more or less transparent. You, you can estimate uh, this integral like this, then you apply uh, Jung's inequality, this one, 
then you uh, use uh, alpha version of the previous inequality. And uh, this is the estimate which you extract from the error identity. Yeah? You see that uh, this sigma uh, is uh, uh, useful and uh, the beta which is here should be coordinated with this sigma. So here you have some error measure and here you have a computable quantity. Uh, what is interesting, this is, uh, I'm close to end. Uh, uh, by the same machinery, this is uh, just quite, quite recent, I think, things. You can deduce uh, uh, error identities and estimates uh, if you have additional regularity assumptions. So assume that we know by some reason that, by, by, by some technique that our U and V additionally are uh, differentiable with respect to time. So they belong to these spaces. Then you, you, you can derive this identity. Now it is, it is a linear problem. It is again, before it was non-linear with this disk. Now that story was ended, was stopped. And we uh, continue uh, the discussion uh, in a different uh, frame. It's about how to get uh, uh, stronger estimates and stronger norm. So this, is, this part here is fully computable. And this, uh, these guys should be uh, estimated. But uh, please, uh, the, the, the hint here is when you obtain this part, it should be constructed in such a way that allow you to, uh, to make the estimation. Yeah, for example, here I have gradient U and here I also have gradient U. Here I have E and, here, uh, uh, and uh, I, uh, this E I can also estimate by this and here I have derivative and it is also here. So just sketch of the proof how how to do this. Again the first step is exactly the same. You introduce UV here and uh, you take uh, now the function W as a time derivative of the difference. Then here immediately you have something nice. The, here it is squared and here uh, by, by this relation, you can transfer to the jump. Then uh, you use uh, integration by parts formula playing on the fact that your uh, functions vanishing on the size of the cylinder. And then you split everything like this. And now more or less you do uh, some manipulations add and withdraw and here uh, to to reorganize these terms in such a way that either you have something computable uh, or you, you, you have something which you can uh, later estimate. And the, at first you obtain the, the identity by these manipulations, you obtain identity like this. But this identity looks nice, but directly we cannot use it because you see here I have gradient, but there is no gradient in the left. So I, I cannot estimate this integral where what, what I have in the left. But here, a small trick, you uh, recall the, the first identity, which I wrote. And if you sum those parts, yeah, then in the left, you will have all as required. And then, uh, and then you, you, you arrive, uh, let me repeat, then you arrive to this identity, which I just wrote. So, uh, one remark, in reality, you can deduce even stronger, estimate for even stronger no, uh, identity for even stronger norm. It, it looks, I, I denote it mu plus plus. You see here, it also includes a divergence, a error in the divergence of your plus. Of course, it, uh, it requires that your approximations must be uh, more regular. So, to apply this identity, your approximations must be more. Yeah, and uh, these identities, uh, because uh, now uh, any integral here, you can you can find the proper term here, and you you can bound them, so you can extract proper uh, proper upper bounds. Uh, 
and they imply a posterior estimates in the same fashion. But I will not exhaust you with these estimates and stop here. So thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Some questions. <clears throat> yes, one question. Uh, Olivier Pirono, uh, can you extend to uh, a convection term? Yes, I can. There. Yeah, so that's it, what I thought. It's in process now. So you need the adjoint will have the opposite convection, right? No, what, what, what I can say is that uh, the similar error identity, at least the basic one for the reaction convection diffusion problem can be derived and uh, okay yeah. so i'll wait for you i wait for the article yeah i hope it will uh, come out soon in our jubilee issue this year so, so please send me yeah thank you yeah thank you another question thank you could you please uh, recall the notation of y star space Set. Uh, why? Why, why uh, you want to see, or uh, it is just to, to say? Uh, you can just uh, say yeah. so. Well, whichever. The the, the, the main uh, uh, that this Y star right space. You you mean Y star? Uh, well, say for a little problem, for instance, for simplicity, whichever. So Y star, uh, it can be simply L two. Uh, QT and Y star means that uh, it is uh, Y star uh, plus the pure divergence of Y star is in L2. Yeah, intersection. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you, you need a square sum of both divergence. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah. Uh, it would be not enough just have uh, divergence L2 in omega for almost every time. No, I think not. So maybe, but in this uh, simple uh, line which I exposed here, of course, here there are many how to say tips. You can improve this, you can improve that. I, I just uh, uh, start uh, tried to, to make this uh, the basic line. I think improvements are possible, of course. Questions? I'll let, uh, thanks, lecture. <laughs>